Now I'm hoping that this is going to fit on here. Got me ball. Yep, it works. Let's look in here. Okay, yeah. neat. We have it functioning. The bellows is now working, and the shutter is free. I brought graphite with me in case it was sticking. Okay. But it's not sticking. You want to see how it works? Sure. Just hold your hand on it and keep the thumb on firm and squeeze it. Wow. That's really something Let's to see. There. Yeah. Can we do it? Let's see. Can we see it? You'll be able to see through it. Oh, yeah. So let, 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 wait a minute. Let me open up the other shutter. This cable just yanked out. No, I, sh I took it out oh. to get the air feed. See through it now? Yeah, sure. We have the wow. the shutter is functioning. That's called a Packard shutter. Mm -hmm. It's nothing but two two leaves that open and close. Wow. Like that. And at one time I had to rebuild them. And the film holders that we use, the plates, mm -hmm. we took one of those slides and cut it, and that's what that's made from. Wow. That's wild. See, we originally started with incandescent light, this is what we used. But then we went into electronic flash, mm -hmm. and there's a solenoid right here, and that would trigger the light to go off. And here's the uh, attachment for it, right here. Ah, okay. And plug into that. And then we'll synchronize uh -huh. to electronic flash. Sure. And this is a choke. From an automobile. What? <laughs> With ingenuity, anything could be no, modified, that, yeah. and this. This was on it when I bought the studio in 1956. Wow, that's a choke from an automobile. Let me just show you. This is it right here. So we didn't have to go to the front of the camera to set the aperture. Mm -hmm. You could just do it right here. Wow. Pushing it in and out. The camera that I showed you, I restored. One of these was missing, and I bought a, a machine lathe and made one. Hmm. There's no way you could buy these knobs. Wow. Of course. I don't. Now, Val, the idea of things like that, about like dealing, taking from the choke from the automobile, was that your own personal? Or that was no, from... this was on it when I bought the business. It was, when you bought it. Yeah, okay. Mr. Mason did that. Wow. Now, did he come up with that or is that something that was done throughout the industry or I believe it's just Mr. Mason's idea. See, it had a, this is a five by seven back and it's also what they call a split back. It takes a half a picture and a half a picture by doing that. And then this way and do the other half. Wow. Hmm. Look at that. So here's, here's your split no, back. We're good. We're fine. That's taken half of a 5 by 7 And if we take that off, you can do the whole 5 by 7 Wow. And you can do it horizontal or vertical. My name is Val Jello, mm -hmm. G E L O. When I was 12 years old, my mother got me a job at a photo studio in Brooklyn. Mm -hmm. And this is the camera they used there. So at 12 years old, I started operating this type of camera. When I went to high school, I studied photography at Metropolitan Vocational High School in New York City. Mm -hmm. And this is what we used in, in the studio to take portraits. Wow. It's a portrait camera. And so this, the exact type of camera that we're looking at here is called a... This is either a Sentry... Kodak or Ansco, they both are exactly the same. Mm -hmm. Let's see. Yeah, this is an Ansco. But Kodak also made the same, same identical camera. This is where the 8x10 back was, and that's what I took with me to North Carolina. Okay. It's, it's missing. Do we have an approximate age of the camera? 
late 1800s. Wow. Yeah, so started making. Originally, they were using glass plates in this, and then they went to uh, the, the gelatin type mm -hmm. plate. I fixed that. I put that bulb on there. Okay. The bulb was rotted. The last time I was here, the bulb was somewhere to be found, but it was all rot. Yeah. In fact, it's right back in here. I can see it. Oh, wow. wow. This is the closest I could find to this is a little bit larger. So if you had a big hand, you'd like to use this one. Great. But the, this function, you saw it work. Or, and again, the function of that bulb is it's just to, to open and close the yeah. shutter. Okay. That's it. Val, is that similar to just the type of bulbs that are used now? This is used on a, a, yeah. a, a, a sphygma manometer. Oh, yeah. how funny. Yeah. That's a blood pressure machine for folks yeah. that are wondering. Yeah. yeah, yeah, exactly. And I used to sell those, so I knew what this was. <laughs> oh, wow. See, this bed can come off, and, and I, I, I still have red felt, I believe, when I bought it for the other. I had to buy a big, big piece. It will fit on there. Mm -hmm. I don't know what this is all about. Your friend. These are notes that Paul, my cousin, wrote down here about photographing them. It's a great camera. I mean, it does a lot of. You you can photograph real tiny objects. Find a place to put this. On. So for how long, Val, did you work with this actual piece, this camera? I worked it well from when I was 12 years old. We had this type of camera until the late 50s. Uh, no, 1972. Wow. Oh wow. Yeah. This comes all the way out. Photograph a small picture. You can you can do it with this camera. It's called a long bellows extension. But what's happened here? This is all dried out. Okay. And when I bought my camera, I found a man to do this in Oceanside, New York. Mm -hmm. And when they saw my camera and took the bellows off, the man told me my father made those bellows. He worked for that company, and I could tell the way everything was folded. Yeah. My dad did that. Wow. Which was amazing. Wow. And this was in 1973. Wow. Something like that. So this camera in your studio, was this used for like portrait photography? Yes, this is portrait work. Okay. Well, you really can't use it because the bellows all leak. Yeah. There's cracks in it. They don't make the material anymore for the film. Wow. Right. Kodak stopped making right. it. So. Okay. Right. And this is a lot for it. So it won't, won't move. This is amazing what happened to that. Yeah. I mean, that, that's got to be uh, wow. yeah. maybe 80 years old or more than that. Right. What is your impression about the overall condition of this camera? I mean, obviously it's in better condition than the one I showed you I restored. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. It is better. but. Uh, and for those who aren't aware, you, you did a recent restoration project of a similar camera? Yeah. Beautiful yeah. camera. See, everybody used this camera was right-handed because the, the varnish is all huh. on this side worn out. That's so interesting. <laughs> yeah, on yeah. this side it's not. So everybody just worked it this way. <laughs> the things you get to. I mean, just looking at it, I could sure. tell that. So you find a lot of these cameras have little personalities in a sense. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then I believe when I bought it, it had a uh, a stand here. It came up, you see the rod came through here and came up and you had a hood over your head. So if it was bright, you, you could still focus. That would be neat. If you, want to see, if you want to see what something looks like in focus, you just turn it this way.
They'll stand over there in front of the camera. Well, I'd have to see that. You can make out a face better. Okay. I'll get the idea of what I'm talking about in a minute. See your face in here. I know what you're going to say. Wow. She's upside down. She's upside down, but I, <laughs> that's an amazing image to see. You know I could do that. No. <laughs> I don't know if the camera, we might be able to focus on I doubt on if you, that, if you had the hood little... over like I was talking about. Yeah. So that is the image in the camera. It's actually yeah. upside down. Yeah. Let me move it back and we'll get a little smaller. Maybe see a little better. Of course, if you were photographing, you'd be doing one side and then the other side. Oh, we actually now got more light from the. Oh, wait, there we go. Wow, that is cool. I'm going to try to take a photo if possible. That is great. The upside All right, this is surreal. This is the, the digital camera taking the image of the. <laughs> Fortunately, there's a glare. Yeah. If you stand right in front. See, if we had the hood on there that I was talking about. Right. Yeah, so I can see. We'll see a whole lot clearer. Yeah, definitely why a hood would be very helpful. Let's see. I'm going to get this out. This photo is the first color photo I ever made. Portrait. Wow. And it's called the dye transfer process made by Kodak. Beautiful. And what was the this? The... It's called the dye transfer print. It's a three-color process made out of cyan, magenta, and yellow. Wow. Gorgeous. Mostly, that's the same foundation that your modern printers use as your three-color. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Except they use black. Right. Yeah. Right. Printers the digital also line. use black. We don't. You don't yeah. need that. And we were the only studio in Long Island that could take this kind of a photo back in the late fifties mm -hmm. and be able to print it ourselves. Wow. Without having to send it out to a laboratory. Mm -hmm. We had that ability to do that. This was That's my brother's beautiful. wife. Wow. I took her picture before they got married, and when he saw this picture. I've got to marry that girl. <laughs> 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 they, they got married. Did, she's and still living. But she's turning 90. She's going to be 90 next, wow. Wow. Next, next, week. Week. Wow. next week. Wow. And she's in a nursing home down in Florida. Wow. So Val, what would be a, what would be a time frame? In other words, in terms of you've, you've taken the photo of your subject, how long before you are able to produce? This leads at least eight hours of work. Wow. So it was not practical to use it in a studio for portrait work, mm -hmm. but it was, we used it in advertising. We did work for like General Motors, Ford, all those automobile manufacturers, all the photos in the magazines were done on dye transfer. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> all yep. the uh, beer ads I've worked on mm -hmm. were done on dye transfer. Wow. Four by five was basically the size we used. Uh -huh. Speed graphic, or what we call the Linhoff German camera, mm -hmm. we're taking on a four by five sheet film. That's what this was done on. In in the later era of using this camera, Val, would would someone have been able to take what you produce from a shoot with this camera and do like enlargements to blow those up oh, yeah, or things like a, that? Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, amazing. But it it's, it took eight by ten photos too, so you didn't have to enlarge it. Right. Mm -hmm. Like bridal right. parties were taken in the studio on 8x10 film, and the back is not here. For, I had the back to that, but it's not here now. Amazing. But you, 5 by 7 you could blow that up. You had a 5 by 7 enlarger. You could put the negative in there and blow it up any size you want. Yeah. So this is 16 by 20 Oh, sure, right. Once you had the negative, it's yeah. just like working with any negative. Five negatives mm -hmm. of transparency. Wow. So it went up to... 16 by 20. We at one time had a roll film back for this camera. So mm -hmm. we could take eight pictures on a, a, a 120 roll of film. Oh. Yeah, we, we, we had a roll, a roll film back. 
But we went to smaller cameras after that. They were more portable. Yeah. 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 We did all the, the high school yearbook here one year. So we went to a, a five by seven camera. Okay. With a four by with a roll film back on it. And we took all the yearbook pictures with that. I was doing hundred and fifty weddings a year. Wow. wow. I had the, the world's largest construction company in Manhattan, and we were photographing all the skyscrapers going up. Wow. In fact, Aristotle Onassis was one of the partners in this company wow. that we worked with. Hmm. And, uh, we do progress photos every month from four different angles. As the building went up, we went up on other buildings to get the angles. Wow. Finally, on the roofs of other buildings all around. Yeah. It would take all day to do yeah. that. Wow. It was a lot of fun doing it. I enjoyed it. Mm -hmm. But I got burned out. Okay. Of course. Yeah. Well, 100 weddings a year, how could you I deny it? <laughs> 41 years old, I went into another business. Yeah. Wow. And I, I trained my cousin Paul. Paul Utica bought the business from me, and uh, he's the one that donated the camera to the library. Okay. In fact, there's a picture here of Paul and his son. Wow. He died of cancer at a very young age in his 40s. Wow. That's his child there. So Paul had the shop in town? Yeah, he so? had Mason Studio. Right. Well, his, his wife sent this to us after he passed away. Hmm. <coughs> he moved to Texas when mm -hmm. he was ill. Hmm. What I do now is I repair dental drills. When I left Port Washington, I went into selling surgical instruments to dentists and repairing their equipment. I still do that. 88 wow. years old, I'm still busy. Wow. Fantastic. Uh, yeah, that's great. Yeah. Fantastic. I don't think I could be a photographer at 88. <laughs> 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 around, jumping around at weddings. Yeah, she <laughs> wants to take pictures of you. Yeah, uh -huh. she's, she's the photographer. Okay. The <laughs> wow. No, this has been neglected for years. Hmm. I took all the paint off and refinished it. Wow. Now, if we brought the red, new red velvet, could you, could that be, could we put that on? Well, yeah, this comes off pretty easy. That's what I wondered. Yeah, no, that, this comes off. It would make it look a lot, lot nicer. Well, it's not as easy as you think. This all has to be, like, almost sanded off. Yeah, mm -hmm. at this okay. point, sure. You know, it's, it's, it's glued on there pretty tight. You can glue it on with rubber cement. Mm -hmm. Okay, I didn't know. It's on there pretty tight. Maybe like almost buffed, probably buffed off would mm -hmm. probably be the easiest. So you can see where it's worn out. <laughs> so you're scraping that up, you don't want to mess up the wood. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You got to soften that. To from somebody off. laying their hands there, or just from leaning from on just it? leaning oh, yeah. on it? Yeah. Sure. Yeah. So you you do this. Okay. That's oh this, right. Oh okay. That's why this right. one's worn out, and that's. <laughs> 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 the other one. Interesting. I never used this. This was something Mr. Mason put on. Okay. I never had to use that for any reason. Mm -hmm. It's like a scope or something. Yeah, yeah. it seems to be. <laughs> it's a great camera. They had it for use. Wow. Hello? And that's a lock, you know. For yes. Then it moved. There's no lock up. Yes. You can lock it in place. It's all these things, everything works. Oh, I love that. You can actually oh, wow. angle the, I didn't realize that. Yeah, oh yeah. Too. You need to, if you had a specific place the camera had to sit, people could yeah. do the tilt. To correct distortion. That's what that's okay. Yeah. If you're photographing a product, then you don't want it to look like this or like that. Right. Yeah. Or right. like this or that. That keystoning would be yeah, in, yeah. in the video. Yeah, then you can. Straighten it right out. Okay. Brilliant. Brilliant. And could the bellows, now you had said that in another camera you were able to have replaced the bellows. Yeah, before, I but, found somebody in Oceanside. Yeah, but as you're saying, that was pretty much luck yeah. that you got the similar. I doubt if there would be you know, anybody yeah, I know. I that could still do this kind of work. Yeah, you can see the damage on the bellows. See, I, all the cameras I had, I used Lexol on them. It's a, a leather conditioner. Okay. And it constantly, in the small four by five cameras, we put Lexol on almost every month uh, mm -hmm. to keep them soft and you know, where they would crack. Yeah. It's all cracked up now. Well, it's probably a, 
of 100 years old. Wow, sure. It's got to be. So I thought, uh, it's, it's real dry. I can tell just touching it. It's supposed to be nice and smooth and shiny. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And like I said, if you see somebody around uh, the house up there, uh, the little house up on uh, Lemon Road, just, just let them know that you've got to Good shape. Everything works. Yeah. Mm -hmm. my, my stepson, it's his house. It's like his mother lives there. So. You know, we've kept the film holders yeah. in here. And that's Oh, okay. Yeah, that's what they were. I don't, I don't see any problem. <laughs> and the, the, the other back, the 8x10 back, didn't yeah. the front. The wheels are yeah. all in good shape. And I don't know what he's done, to be honest. But this was, I had never seen that before. But, I you know, before this, you, every time you had to go in front of the camera and open the shutter. Right. So you can see and the, the, the iris, yeah. so it'd be wide open. Otherwise, it'd be dark. Then you'd have to, well, when you're ready yeah, to take the picture, you have to stop it down. You did all that manually. Okay. Well, this. With that. Yeah, well, yeah. yeah. You can work real fast. I'll open it up and close. It. Ingenuity. Yeah. Yeah. Ingenuity. Figuring out how to. I opened it up so you can, they can always see through it now. Great. I'll show you how it did that. See, it's on, on time here. Otherwise, it'd be on bulb. And now it's, now it's and when it's on bulb, but you do that, it opens and then it closes, opens and closes. This way, it's open. Wow. And stays open until you hit that again. Okay. Makes sense. This is the thing for the flash. When it would, would, mm. would synchronize and go off when the shutter opened. It's such it's such basic technology, but at the same time, efficient. Does what it's supposed to do, mm -hmm. which is more than a lot of the technology that's out there today. <laughs> yeah, just plain simple stuff. Works. This this will all come off. Mm -hmm. Don't ask me how. I don't remember right this minute, but I'm sure there's something underneath okay. it. Unscrews it and you lift it up. Right. You can feel it. All it takes is one one screw to hold it. I will. I'll just put some thought to it. Now, but anyhow, that's it. You're, you're welcome. Thank you. Take care. It Bye. seems to me there was another one of these on this side. Let me look at my camera. have one on this. We kept the unexposed ones here and the exposed ones on this side. Sure. This is broken off. Okay. Sure. There was another one just like that on this side. And this, the wheel on the bottom, Val, I missed. That's that's what draws it this, in. This uh, center yeah, wheel. This is to make that's it to, to do that. Oh, that's the, right. That's the and that's that wheel is horizontal like that. tilt, right? Got okay. it. Brilliant. I never use that. That's there for decoration. I don't know. Great. Awesome. Great camera. Well, thank you, Val. You're yeah. welcome. Fantastic. <laughs>